we don't need a just transition in Alberta because we don't intend to transition away from oil and natural gas. As um, many of you in the industry have pointed out, the transition we're talking about is a transition away from emissions. It's not a transition away from production. That is the Daniel Smith that we need, that sort of unapologetic um, listen, and Daniel Smith, I, I've questioned her quite a few times about using language like net zero. I'm like, why are you even talking like this? And she's like, well, the industry is talking about it, so I'm not going to tell them no. But uh, I, for one, don't have a problem with saying if people want to buy renewable, we'll sell them renewable. We'll, we're happy to make money off of that. But the fact that she just comes out deadpan and says, we're, no, we're not transitioning. If we, If Alberta goes completely renewable, let's say... We should still be getting oil out of the ground, making money off of it and selling it to countries that have lower environmental and human standards, like the human rights standards. The most important and sort of responsible thing Canada do for the world can do for the world is export our responsible natural resources. And that, at least on that front, seems that, that there's no apologies coming. There's no retractions coming. Um, that clip to me and probably to most of the folks here, that is a, a good Daniel Smith clip. Um, despite progressives sharing that as though it's some sort of bad news and we should be ashamed of not transitioning. Uh, what do you think on that front, Sid? Well, it is interesting. I, I see her perspective as one that comes from the, the industry or the Alberta stance of getting a, a product to market, basically. Um, and, however, in the process of doing so, she is kind of... Uh, I don't know if this is the right word to use, but submitting herself to the 2050 agenda, uh, uh, the 2035 agenda, the, the, the world, you know, decision or the world body has decided that these are the, the environmental targets we have to hit by X and Y day to, you know, save the planet. Um, is there yeah. a questioning of the science here? I don't think so. I think this is just a, um, okay, we, we agree with the mission. We understand its need for the, you know, the world to transition away from this and that. Uh, we're just not going to do the, the just Trudeau transition. Uh, we're going to take it on by our own means and find a way that's more practical, uh, which may or may not be a good thing. But at the end of the day, mm -hmm. it is still... The, the the same road in a sense is being taken yeah well and i, I know i said that like we were talking with i, I did an interview as well with a uh, rebecca schultz the environment of uh or minister of environment rather in protected areas um and i said like probably most of our viewers don't care about net zero rhetoric what they care about is are you going to attack our jobs and i think as long as they preserve that uh sentiment uh, that's okay. Um, and part of the place that we're, we're seeing this is, is, is likely actually in practice is, is on this moratorium uh, on renewable energy sectors. Um, so for folks who aren't aware out there, um, there is a uh, there is effectively a six month pause right now on projects taking place. Um, and what that does, it, this is projects over one megawatt. So whether it be solar or wind, they're pausing those right now, just a pause. Um, so that they can have reclamation and territory plans in place. The, the NDP loves to scream and shout about the, the lack of capacity and planning to clean up oil sites and how the government's having to invest money now. And the government is saying, oh, yeah, well, we're going to have the same problem with solar panels in years. Um, so everyone from, from Daniel Smith to Joe T. Gondek is in agreement that they have to pause and have a plan in place here. But this is the latest thing that the NDP is screaming about. Uh, we do have one more clip of Daniel Smith, though. I want to do that, and then we can get into the NDP reaction to that six-month moratorium. But let's jump to the one additional clip we have of Daniel Smith first. The technologies that will provide fundamental change in the future are technologies that will provide the world with miracles of cheap and abundant energy, all while reducing carbon emissions. And those technologies will come from the minds of innovators right here in Alberta. And they will spring from here because of our geology, because of our energy industry know-how, and because of our commitment to carrying out energy exploration and development better than anyone else. This is the story of Alberta's past and present and future. Alberta is in a race to develop these game-changing technologies. We're competing with Texas and Colorado and Norway. And we will win that race so long as we are not hobbled by the ongoing poor policy decisions coming from our federal government. We don't need a just transition 
in Alberta because we don't intend to transition away from oil and natural gas. As um, many of you in the industry have pointed out, the transition we're talking about is a transition away from emissions. It's not a transition away from production. We believe industry has started down a path of reducing their emissions while exporting more oil and delivering more LNG. I often try to tell my counterparts in Ottawa that out of a barrel of oil, I believe you've now been able to produce something like 6,000 different materials, ranging from lubricants and petrochemicals all the way onward to asphalt and other building materials. And that, to me, is going to be the future. That is why I have so much confidence that we, as we reduce emissions, we are going to be able to increase our ability to have an imprint in the world. Yeah, there does seem to be a little bit of that, like, kowtowing to the, the terminology out there. But it feels like apologetics to me where, and I don't mean apologetics as in apologizing, it's like playing the game and defending a position. Um, but there's nothing wrong with reducing pollution. I just don't want to, and I mean, we're talking about if, if we're going to reduce pollution, let's talk about like the massive sewer waste directly into oceans that you can see coming out of some coastal progressive cities in this country. But if we're able to produce more stuff and put out less uh, emissions and have cleaner air, that's all positive. I don't think anyone is necessarily uh, opposed to that. So that it is a fine line, though. It is a bit of a balancing act between playing into their games and feeding their rhetoric and this. But uh, the Alberta government has rejected a federal um, emissions cap, which would limit our capacity to output resources. Um, they have said that they will not comply with 2035. And one thing that would be kind of funny, and I couldn't care less about these sort of carbon emissions caps, to be perfectly honest, but if we were able to see our economy grow, if we were to both see oil and gas and renewables increase, if we were to export more energy as a province, and if we were to do it all at under net zero before the federal government could do that, wouldn't that just be the best Albertans you are particularly concerned, just as an aside, happen to be able to do this? I don't think it should ever happen at the expense of jobs, at the expense of industries, any of those other things. But if there is technological advancements that allow us to pollute less and create more, I don't think that's a bad thing. I think that's where Daniel Smith is trying to come at this from. But I, I don't know, maybe I'm being too... Uh, too optimistic with that. It is, it is the language of the World Economic Forum that is here anyways. Well, let me just say, uh, recently I saw some news that there's, uh, uh, you know, those paper straws that, you know, we uh, know and love because they replace the, the plastic ones, uh, you know, more environmentally It's coming. It's one of our that. stories. Can yeah, yeah exactly. Now? The, the yeah. paper straws that they used because they're more environmentally friendly, they implemented this, you know, to save the planet. Uh, it turns out they've got what a bunch of toxic chemicals in them. So, you know, congratulations, yeah. that paper straw that's been decomposting or pardon me, that's been uh, 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 what would you call it? Not decomposing. evaporating. Uh, decomposing, thank you very much, into your, you know, your Tim Hortons ice cappuccino or whatever it may be, it's decomposing toxic chemicals into your body. Great job, you know, yeah. and that's the yeah. benefit of the environmental movement is they're willing to, you know, take on issues that aren't really issues and end up doing more damage <laughs> to everybody. Like this is the, 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 the playbook at this point. Um, so am I surprised? <laughs> <laughs> Not really, um, but I'm glad we could do a little public service announcement here to make sure, you know, people know that you're not saving the environment. You're literally just killing yourself uh, when you yeah. drink out of a paper straw. Progressives taking on issues that aren't issues one issue at a time. Uh, yeah, that, that's funny. And I mean, we've talked about this before, but you and, and Daniel said touch on it in that video, the petroleum byproducts. It's like everyone, everyone not long ago, even environmentalists were like heralding, oh, these like these magical byproducts that like, we're not we're not wasting any part of this process. If we can't use it for fuel, we can use it for for plastics. The kayaks that the hippies paddle up to protest oil rigs on are made out of petroleum byproducts. Like it, the product is there. We were just switching away from uh, paper bags to plastics because we had them anyways. We didn't have to cut down trees. Now we're switching back. We're jumping all over the place. Hey folks, that was a clip from the daily live stream. I co-host it Monday to Thursday from 1 p.m. to 2 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. The Alberta team takes over on Friday. Please tune in. And by the way, we want to hear your two cents worth. If you're able to make a minimal $5 donation, we will read your chat on the air live. Thank you.